everyone, this is Ginger Quinlan with your inspirational card reading of the week. Happy May, happy Beltane, and happy birthday, Taurus. Let's dive in to see what the week of May 6th through the 12th brings us. So I like to shuffle the cards first and talk to my guides and angels and bring them in before I start reading for you. And I'd like to say here that, first of all, I cannot get the time and date to change on my camera. It just won't. I've tried every way I can think of. So those of you who think I'm recording this at a totally different year and a different time, I'm not. It's right now. And second, I also do intuitive readings with cards. And without cards, I usually just tune in and ask my guides and angels to show me, tell me, let me feel, see, hear, taste, smell, whatever it is I need to share with you. And I use the cards to give you something to look at besides me. For this entire reading. All right, so I've already shuffled. Let's dive in and see what this week holds for all of us. So first card, mm, Prince. Prince of Swords. You know, this past week, the week before, as we headed into May, the energies felt super restrictive to me, which means that I felt like I was banging my head against the wall trying to catch up with all the things I needed to get done and all the things that I had on my list to do while trying to get the things that I had from April finished as well. And that's what this card talks about. Breaking away from the chains that bind you. I felt like I was wrapped in chains right? this last week. It's been difficult, very difficult. Because we have some planetary energies that are restricting us and making us feel scattered, we have Mars and Gemini, which kind of makes our energy go all over the place. We can't get it focused, and we feel like we have to multitask. And then we had Saturn and Pluto kind of beaming down on us. Saturn's heavy energy. It makes us think about our money. Pluto is rebirth, death and rebirth. And let me just say here, a lot of us are having issues with our pets right now whether they're sick or they're crossing over or we have loved ones, living people who are crossing over too. Pluto rules that energy. So there is this rebirth death energy going on as well. And in the rebirth part, it's letting go of the old things, which really coordinates to the Prince of Swords, breaking away from the things that bind us, breaking away from the conflicts, breaking away from the things that are no longer working in our world and creating a new world for ourselves. And then, just to make things more complicated, we have Venus messing with us, all right? <laughs> Venus is making us think about our money. And Jupiter just went retrograde. The planet of expansion just went in reverse. So whatever you're trying to break away from, whatever it is you're trying to create in your life, that you may have been kind of banging your head against the wall with, it's about to break free. Yay, and move you forward. And you won't feel like you're all chained up like you might have felt the last week or so. So this card really says, get busy, time to make things happen. And I know I've said that for the last three weeks, make it happen, make it happen. But there is this restrictive energy that's keeping that from happening. So we've all been on hold. We've been waiting. It's like, wait, 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 wait some more. Just keep waiting. Just keep listening for our guides and angels to tell us how to get through this energy. It's been so frustrating. And now we can do it. We don't have to keep waiting. We can say, all right, this is going to move forward. It's going to happen. And we can make it happen. All right, so no more waiting, no more. You may have been waiting just to see how it was going to play out, too, because we have the Knight of Swords. The Knight of Swords is a messenger. Knights always bring in the message of something new getting ready to happen. So this is seeing beyond the conflicts, seeing beyond what has you stuck, seeing beyond what's making you bang your head against the wall, making you see that you can actually go at this, and maybe it's from a different direction or a different method or just a new way of thinking about it. You may have discovered like a new app you can use or a different opportunity that came up that said, 
if you do this thing that you think you should have been doing but couldn't quite get it done, it may be because there's a new thing trying to happen that's going to take all your attention and time so that other thing would have stopped you completely. So think about these things as you go into this week and you try to find some peace with it. This is taking off your blinders to really look at what it is that may have you stuck. I feel like there's a lot of real estate issues around people right now. Lots of real estate issues, whether your house is too big or too small or you need to do things to it, whether you're moving things around, whether you're repairing things, getting ready for spring and summer, or winter if you're on the other side of the world, or really just trying to look at how you can readjust maybe your mortgage or your location. Also a lot of career type energy shifting and changing because we have a lot of Taurus energy around us. Yes, Taurus, your energy is ruling us. So we're thinking about our money. We're thinking about careers. We're thinking about who we love. Taurus is all about love, what we love, all about our material things. So this is finding peace in that, taking off your blinders, getting to a peaceful place to help you get where you want to be. And then our emotions come in because we have Pluto and retrograde, or Pluto and Saturn, excuse me, kind of duking it out together and shining on us and making us go way down in our souls to say that doesn't work for me, this doesn't work for me, that does work for me, I'm gonna go after it. So the Queen of Cups is an emotional card that comes up to say, look beyond what you're not seeing. Look with your emotions. This is going into your feminine side to really use your emotions to see and to feel and to know what it is you want to shift in your world. It's a powerful card, the Queen of Cups. It can also be issues with mom. It can be issues with females in general trying to see what they're doing. It could be connecting to them, not so much an issue. And it can also be tapping into your intuition to see where you need to go with everything, but doing it from your guts, doing it from your instincts, doing it from a place of just knowing this is how it's gonna be, and this is how you're gonna do it, and this is how you're gonna deal with these situations that are coming up. The star, the best card in the whole deck, yay! If you can follow your instincts and really look at what it is you need to let go of or might want to look at to shift into, the star is the end result, which is you get your wishes, you get it all. It's all coming your way and it's coming with so much strength and energy and beauty, it's gonna take your breath away. This is good stuff. So towards the end of this week, I feel like a lot of us are gonna be dealing with ourselves really just dealing with how much stuff we can get done, how much multitasking we can get done, how much new energy we can deal with right now and clearing out our material belongings, maybe our houses, going into something that's more manageable or affordable, really looking at our careers and totally shifting gears with that and really looking at how we can bring love in on a much bigger, stronger scale. So we have some amazing energy coming our way for the end of this week. So I like to end this reading. These are my cute little reading glasses because I can't see without them. If I read, <laughs> I like to do um, meaningful messages cards at the end because I'm a medium. And these cards are absolutely gorgeous on the back and on the front they have a message. And the message is, you pull this every day or every week, if you like, they're put out by um, Wimbridge Research Center, who is an afterlife study group that I am certified with. So each one of these cards has a message on how you can connect to the other side or interact with the other side on an everyday basis, all right? And they help you get through your grief. Grief is a horrible thing because it creeps up on you when you least expect it. It comes around, you may be having the best day ever and all of a sudden you think of that person who meant the world to you, who is now in spirit, and you crumble. And then you try to suck it up and go do life because that's what you're expected to do. But you can't always do that. Sometimes you just have to let the tears come and just acknowledge the grief. So 
for all of you who are grieving and are dealing with people on the other side, and we all are, we all lose people, and it can be your pets too. There are lots of pets crossing over right now. Lots of pets going through sickness and really struggling over the past week to two weeks. I've been watching it on Facebook. So uh, this could apply to them also if you have a pet in spirit. So the card I pulled says, what better tribute could you pay to someone you have loved and lost than to live your life to the fullest and to remember the time when you shared together with joy? Powerful. This is from Teresa Chung, author of Heaven Called My Name, Incredible True Stories of Heavenly Encounters and the Afterlife. So what better tribute? to go on and do the things that you know your loved one would want you to do. Like, I know my brother would love to have a glass of wine with me. He, he loved wine. I know my dad would love to go play in the garden with me. He would love to go smell the iris, dig up the iris, get his hands all filthy, dirty, and totally revel in gardening. I know that my grandma, my grandma Hogue, would want me to can strawberries for her and with her and invite her in for a cup of tea because she loved to sit in her jam filled, wonderfully scented kitchen and just spend time with me. So what are your loved ones favorite things to do? You know, in my daily interactions with clients that I do mediumship for, the other side comes through always and says, this is what I miss. I miss having a cheeseburger and french fries. I get that from young people all the time. Or I get, I really want a steak from the men who are on the inside, perhaps a husband or a fiance. I want a steak. I want you to go have steak for me. Or they say, celebrate my birthday. This is a day to celebrate me. I want you to have cake. Invite me in. I'll have cake with you. When you live your fullest life, Knowing that your loved ones are interacting with you, you will feel them more. You will know they're around more. You'll get signs from them more. So if on this day you're struggling, just live your life to the fullest. Do the things you know they would love for you to do. And invite them in to do the things that they love to do with you. I will leave you with that and wish you an amazing first week of May. Thank you for watching this video. And if you like it, subscribe. Hit the little bell so you get my notifications. The readings for the rest of the month will be up shortly, and I look forward to sharing that with you as well. Thank you for watching. Have an amazing week.